Hi, let's get started with Module 10, Renewable Energy Forecasting Advanced Topics. We have looked in the previous module at some of the first steps we can make into the forecasting world for power generation. I don't have to repeat that forecasting is about the future. You already know that we'll consider lead times between 0 and 48 hours in line with market-based operation. At a certain time t, we have access to information from the past, which are power measurements, weather measurements, maybe remote sensing measurements. And also we have some information available at time t, but that can tell us about the future. So that's weather forecasts, the potential development of weather system, the weather situation. Forecasts we are going to generate for power generation are always going to have a part of error. We just accept it and we try to minimize it. In practice, all our energy forecasting problem rely on some form of regression with a set of inputs and outputs that are ordered in time. So for each and every time in the past, before the time Tn here of interest, we have measurements for input that are explanatory variables, which we denote by x. And we have this set of explanatory variable value for the past, so all the time t before the current time. And we have some response variable observation, so that's the output, and they're gathered in a set where we denote by y this response variable. Examples here would be wind speed forecast as explanatory variable and power production, power generation as response variable. Eventually, we aim at finding a relationship between those explanatory and response variables based on the past data. We'll write it this way. So we have y, our response variable. We have x, our explanatory variable. And we try to find a function f that will model the relationship between the two. And this function f most likely will have a set of parameter theta. For the linear regression case we considered before, there were two parameters to consider, the intercept and the slope. There is also something in our observation, it's noise. So besides this relationship, there will also be a noise component. And we assume that this noise has a zero mean and some finite variance. The job of the forecaster is to propose some form for this function f. So again, if you do linear regression, you consider that you have a linear relationship between your input and your output. And then the forecaster has to find a way to learn the parameters for this functional choice. Again, for the case of linear regression, we have to learn these two parameters that are the slope and the intercept. Eventually, when one has decided on f and one has estimated the theta parameters, we can use some new value for explanatory variable and we'll plug them into this function with the estimated parameters to obtain our forecast for power generation. Here, beside this framework, please remember that we have to make decisions on how to optimally use the input data. So how long of a data set in the past, for instance, we want to use. We will have to make decision on the shape of f. Is this going to be a linear function of some of the nonlinear alternative we'll discuss here? Eventually, we'll have to think of the method for parameter estimation, etc. So quite a number of decisions to make in a data-driven environment. Here in practice, if we consider wind power generation, the modeling we have to do is about the power curve. We have this scatterplot that connects wind speed forecast, maybe at 10 meters or at some other height, and wind power generation as observed in relation to this wind speed forecast. This scatterplot is quite spread. It's quite difficult to find a relationship between the two. So here we have to decide what is a function f that must describe this relationship. Then if this function f has some parameters, we have to learn these parameters based on data. And then eventually we may try different function f and also see different ways to estimate these parameters. That means that in terms of learning objectives in this module, it is aimed for you to be able to go further than the linear regression techniques we studied in the previous module 
and apply them to renewable energy forecasting. It's also aimed for you to be able to have a basis for making this data-driven decision for improving the models that you will be using for forecasting. And eventually, I would like you to have an understanding of non-stationarity and how we can account for its effect when modeling. In practice, the module 10 is going to be based on three video lectures and associated self-assessment quizzes. In the first block, we'll discuss how to go from linear to non-linear regression. In the second block, we'll discuss non-stationarity and time adaptivity for learning parameters in models. And eventually, in the last block, we'll discuss data-driven decisions and how this may apply to some of these previous techniques that we mentioned. Good luck with module 10.